Hey boys and girls, I'm going to take my um, pumpkin landscape and add some color to it. There are lots of different ways you can do this. Any way you want. Colored pencil, watercolor pencil, marker, paint, watercolor paint, anything you want. I'm actually going to start with, um, I'm going to turn these Crayola markers into some watercolor paint, which will be kind of fun. They're pretty versatile marker and if you have a set of these, these work really, really great. It can be a washable set or a normal set. Um, and Mr. Sketch work okay, but I, th I think the Crayolas do this best. So it'd be really easy for me to just color this in. Just color every pumpkin orange and my grass green and my path brown and my sky, whatever color I feel like. And, um, but I'm going to try to make these pumpkins that I made, that I drew, to look a little bit like they have a form to them, which is a three-dimensional feeling to them. A form is a three-dimensional shape. So I'm gonna outline all of my, um, basically, kind of in a quick way, all of the lines that I drew um, on all my pumpkins. So when I do that, it is, um, I'm just highlighting those areas because I'm gonna turn, like I said, I'm gonna turn this into watercolor paint in a minute. And when I do that, I'm going to want these grooves to be the darker part because that is where the, the grooves are, are actually kind of deep into the pumpkin. And then this section right here is the section that's kind of bumps outward. So the area that is further in on the pumpkin has more shadow than the area that is on the outside. So basically, if you want a real picture to look like with all the space that we have, if you want it to feel like it's a real space, you really need to draw things that look three-dimensional, like we've got these pumpkins, because everything else is a little flat, and that's okay. Um, but then if you make that, you add highlight and shadow anywhere in the picture, it really starts to feel like a real space. So I have my pumpkins all outlined, and I'm actually gonna take my yellow, and I'm just gonna add a little stripe of yellow in the middle of my pumpkins. And I'll use a skinny end if I need to for some of the ones that are getting smaller. Um, and this is gonna add a highlight to the area that bubbles out, as you know, we were just talking about with the, the pumpkin that can have um, an area that kind of comes out and catches the highlight. It catches the light that is available, whether it's outside light, inside light, just gets a little tiny bit. So now that I have those all kind of marked up, I'm gonna take my water and my brush and I'm going to start with this large one here. I'm gonna start with my yellow, and my yellow is gonna kind of bleed out into my orange here, and it's gonna make that little highlight there. So you just kind of let the marker do its own thing. And I'm not gonna um, overwork my paper, which means I'm going to take my brush and let make get, put lots of water on this. Um, ooh, I missed that pumpkin. You gotta be careful to keep your markers away from water though, because it can really wreck them. There we go. Um, I'm going to put the water on top and make sure it's really, really wet water that you're not using kind of a water a brush with a little water. That really makes a huge difference. Now, what also can make a huge difference on the success of this project I have learned is um, what kind of paper you're using. This is a normal drawing paper. Um, so it's uh, just a normal classroom like watercolor drawing paper. 80 pound is what it's called. It's how much um, pressure has been pushed against this. So um, 80 pound paper is perfect for this. Um, I tried this actually on tag board. If you happen to notice my drawing is slightly different than the one, the video of the actual drawing, it is because I had to redraw it. I started this and I had, had made this on tag board, which is a little bit hardier, thicker paper. I think it absorbed the marker so well. I don't know. It just did not allow any of my marker to move, which was a shock. So sometimes um, this, the type of paper you use makes a big difference. This one is meant to take on a little bit more water probably than the tag board. So you can see that this kind of gives a little bit of that illusion and wait till it dries. When it dries, you'll really see the lights and darks of the oranges and with a little bit of that highlight of that um, yellow in there. So I'm gonna give that a second to dry before I go into my greens because for the grassy parts because I don't want my markers to get ruined but my sky is available right now and kind of dry oops dry that a little bit let me get a tissue and kind of clear this up whenever you have a little mistake it's great to just kind of flap that up 
and that'll disappear later. So my sky can be anything. Um, I kind of think about like spooky fall picture, like maybe it's, you know, maybe this is the moon or maybe it's the sun kind of coming down. So I think I'm just gonna draw right on top of my trees because my trees are just gonna stay black. I'm just gonna kind of use the side of my marker and kind of do some like spirally kind of wind, almost a little Van Gogh-like kind of uh, go all different directions. I'm gonna take a little bit of blue and do the same thing. So I might kind of make this one come up here. Maybe I'll make this one kind of come down here. Might come up like this, like that. And actually my marker pack had gray, which is kind of nice to have a gray Crayola marker because every so often you need a little gray. So I might just actually, oops, sorry if I bumped you. I'm just gonna add a little bit of gray kind of color with the side, kind of wisps of some wind kind of going through here. And then I'm gonna take my water again. I'm gonna go first on my uh, blue. And kind of, again, watery. Now, if I over rub my paper, especially um, if you're doing this on any kind of like uh, thinner paper than this, which would be like a copy paper, some um, different kinds of um, uh, paper you can get in packs can be a little bit thinner. It might um, it might look a little rubbed quickly. So I'm trying not to let my brush rub the same spot too many times because if you do, if you go back and forth and back and forth, it'll start the paper will start to pill almost like a shirt or a sweater that's been washed a million times. So you want to try to um, avoid that. So this is kind of showing up. I like this. I like how watery this is looking. And it's not gonna melt 100% down, but it's kind of nice to see that kind of come, all these colors kind of run into each other. And now I'm gonna hit kind of my grays. Let's see how they, and let the purple and grays kind of get a little mixy. I don't think the gray's mixing as much, that's okay. I'll just pull some of this color down. And if I wanted to add more color to this with marker, I would want to wait until this is all the way dry and do it again. I would not want to do, I kind of want to try the gray again, but uh, I'm not going to do it right now because I know it'll ruin the gray. So I'm just going to kind of get that, let that dry a little bit more. But the colors for sure bleed out really, really nicely. So my pumpkins are almost dry now. So now I can kind of go into my greens. So same kind of thing. I want you to think about how light hits the earth. So the earth, wherever there's a valley, that's probably where it's going to look darker. So I would say like the, like maybe this is like, this is, this is the top of the hill. So I'm gonna kind of do a little color here and a little darker towards that line, but then go a little bit lighter. And this is a path here, so I'm gonna do this brown. So a little darker and then I'm gonna do a little lighter. Darker. Kind of, this is kind of just going to get a little wisp over here. So we're going to do a little darker. Make sure that's dry. Darker, lighter. Darker, lighter. Darker, lighter. Just do little wisps here. Darker, lower. And then where the sun hits it, it's going to be a little bit lighter. Okay, I've got that, and I'm while, oops, I forgot this area here. I'm gonna do this too. Alrighty, so while I've got that, I'm gonna do my brown too. And same kind of thing, it's probably gonna be darker at the bottom of an area and then lighter. So down here, and then it's gonna get a little bit lighter. And maybe along the edges, it's gonna be a little darker too. A little darker. Okay. Alrighty. So I'm going to start with the green and start down here. Get that green moving around. And like I said, this is really that you can do any 
project with these Crayola markers. And don't get too worried if you have your colors like kind of mixed. Like if my greens go into my oranges, that's okay. I don't get picky like that, especially when you're using a lot of water like this. It's gonna, when it dries, it's gonna look cool. If you wanna control that, you're just gonna need to use a little less water, but I'm not so worried about that. This is a for fun kind of painting. And if you get all the way done and it gets it dries all the way, if you are a mixed media fan, which basically means you like to use lots of art materials together, um, which I tend to do, I think it would be pretty nice to either kind of pull out some of these shapes with a little, if you have oil pastels at home, you could even do marker on top. Once it's all the way dry, add a little bit of detail, especially if there's a pattern or a texture you wanted to add or a face to a pumpkin or something like that. And then, um, or colored pencil for sure. Oh, I knew this brown was gonna be good. Brown looks great. And this is really, um, this is it. We can do this kind of, uh, this is a great way to use your markers. Great way to have watercolor paints if you don't have them. You don't have to spend a lot of money on watercolors. But this works really well with Sharpie because Sharpies are permanent so that black line is not moving on me. But if I use, if I drew this whole picture with a um, black Crayola marker, all the black would run. So that's something to keep a note of. But that's basically it. Oops, tipped you. There it is. That's what it looks like finished. Can't wait to see what you do.